We have a circular coil with 250 windings or turns and it has a radius of 0 0.04 meters. It is rotated clockwise inside a magnetic field with a strength of 3.2 Tesla. And then 9.1 says calculate the magnetic flux through the coil at the position indicated on the diagram where the coil is perpendicular to the field. So we want to calculate the magnetic flux linkage, right? We know fully well that the formula is given as uh, the magnetic field strength multiplied by the area and cos of theta. So if the equation doesn't say anything about the angle, right? Then you should always assume that theta is equal to zero. So here we're gonna have uh, B, which is our magnetic field strength. It's said to be 3.2 Tesla. So we have 3.2 multiplied by the area. We have a circular coil here. So since the coil is circular, we're gonna use pi r squared, the area of a circle, right? So we're gonna have pi. Uh, we know fully well that the radius is 0 0.04, so 0 0.04 squared, and then cos of 0, which is 1. So we basically have uh, 3.2 multiplied by pi multiplied by 0 0.04 squared. And if you put that in your machine, you're going to get uh, 0 0.016 Weber right and we can go to 9.2 9.2 says if the coil rotates clockwise through 25 degrees so now we have a new angle of 25 degrees and the potential difference induced is 2.8 volts so we have an emf of 2.8 volts calculate the time uh, in which this rotation takes place so we know fully well that uh, the emf induced is equal to minus n the number of turns and then the change in the magnetic flux linkage divided by the change in time so again the mistake that most people do they they use the magnetic flux linkage and not the change in the magnetic flux linkage in 9.1 we calculated the magnetic flux linkage initial right now that the angle is changing because we're rotating the coil clockwise we're gonna have a different magnetic flux linkage final right so the magnetic flux linkage initial was 0 0.016 uh, weber so now we want the magnetic flux linkage final right so that will be uh, 3.2 multiplied by uh, the same area which is pi uh, 0 0.04 squared and then cos of 25 we can substitute our values in the equation in order to find delta t, right? So the change in the magnetic flux linkage will be equal to uh, the flux linkage final minus the flux linkage initial. So let's go ahead and substitute. Uh, so the EMF is said to be 2.8 volts and then minus n, which is the number of turns or windings, uh, which is 250, right? multiplied by uh, the change in uh, the magnetic flux linkage so magnetic flux linkage final uh, is basically i want you to realize something uh, this term here is basically 0 0.016 right and then i want you to realize something uh, this term here is 0 0.016 so flux linkage final will be 0 0.016 multiplied by cos of 25 degrees and then minus uh, the initial which was 0 0.016 right and then we divide everything by uh, the change in time the change in time is what we're interested in now if a is equal to b divided by c and we want to find c right you're going to cross multiply and divide both sides by a so you get c is equals to b divided by a so we're gonna apply the same idea c here is delta t so delta t will be equals to uh, b is this entire expression here so delta t will be equals to minus 
250 multiply by 0 0.016 uh, multiply by cost of 25 uh, minus 0 0.016 right and then we divide in everything by uh, 2.8 so we have 2.8 yeah and then if you put that in your calculator uh, you're gonna get 0 0.13 uh, seconds um and let's move to 9.3 9.3 says which law can be used to explain the phenomenon described in question 9.2 we know fully well that that is faraday's law as soon as you see magnets and then you have a coil that's faraday's law right so the law which we're investigating is faraday's law and then we are also supposed to state the law we know fully well that it says that the magnitude of the induced emf across the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the rate of change in the magnetic flux linkage with the conductor there's other definitions too you can use you're not only supposed to use the one i just mentioned as long as it's on the exam guidelines and then 9.4 uh, 9.4.1 says if the coil is replaced with a square coil with a side strength if the coil is replaced with a square coil with a side length of 0 0.04 meters and the same movement is made in the same amount of time will the induced emf be the same as larger than or smaller than the circular coil write down only the same larger than or smaller than so basically uh let's let me write the equation again uh e is equal to minus n uh the change in the flux uh divided by delta t so they're telling us that delta t is staying the same and then the number of turns are staying the same what is changing is the area so let's see how the area affects the change in the magnetic flux so the magnetic flux is equals to uh, the magnetic force strength multiplied by the area multiplied by cos of theta if you increase the area the induced emf should increase and then if you reduce the area the induced emf should decrease so the question here is basically which one has the greater area is it the circular coil or is the square that we pro we propose it so let's compare the areas of the two so we know fully well that for the uh, circular coil uh, the area is pi r squared right uh, so something around 21 divided by 7 multiplied by 0 0.04 squared and then uh, let's look at uh, our square right the area of a square is length times breadth and then the length is said to be 0 0.04 right and then the breadth is the same for square so this will be close to uh, 0 0.04 squared essentially so we're comparing 0 0.04 squared with 0 0.04 squared multiplied by pi obviously the area of the circular one will be larger right because it's the area of the square multiplied by pi so this new induced emf will be smaller than because we're essentially decreasing the area it cannot be greater than and then 9.4.2 says explain the answer to 9.4.1 which is what we just did 